the structure of Lakota. Lakota is a North American language belonging to the Suan language family. The Sioux Indians are famous for having defeated General Custer in 1876 at the Battle of Little Big Horn. This language is very interesting and archaic and it shows the first stages of the language development and evolution. In order to prepare this lecture, I have used this Lakota dictionary, which contains a grammatical description, very comprehensive grammatical description of the language, also some other sources like this word for, for word Lakota, which uh, is accompanied by a CD. But most useful to me was an article by A. W. Tuting named some reflections on Lakota language structures as looked at by a naive non-native. You can find it on the internet. I will start my explanation from the Lakota root and the main times of Lakota sentences. So, there are two kind, kinds of roots in Lakota. Active root, which is an active verbal noun, and a passive root, which is a passive noun or adjective or participle. And each active or passive root can serve as a basis for several types of sentences. So, Lakota is a passive or passive active language. A passive active language besides all active and passive sentences in this language can be non-topicalized or topicalized. Again, non-topicalized and topicalized since Lakota is also a topic oriented language and in this way we have for example an active non topicalized sentence an active topicalized <coughs> sentence which uh, could be a preposed non topicalized sentence or preposed topicalized sentence or incorporational non-topical sentence or incorporational topicalized sentence and again a passive preposed non-topicalized sentence a passive topicalized preposed sentence and passive non-topicalized incorporated sentence incorporational sentence and so on For example, we may have a passive same singular root te, which means he's being dead or he is dead, she's being dead or she is dead, it is being dead or it's dead, someone is dead, someone is being dead and so on and an active singular root which means not a uh, state of being but action kte which uh, is translated as literally as killing but uh, his killing or he kills or he is killing 
killing or her kills or she is killing and so on or someone is killing and a reflexive active singular root each hikte which uh, means self killing or he has killed himself she has killed herself and so on this is for the singular for the plural we have a suffix p which is added to the root and in this way we can see happy they are dead they are being dead this is a passive one ktepi they are killing someone they they are killing of someone they kill him they kill her they kill it and so on to active or passive roots we can add preposed or incorporated personal pronouns or personal pronominal prefixes or infixes and in this way we can form preposed or incorporated sentences for the third person singular there is a zero prefix prefix so in this way we will have only kte his killing her killing he kills her kills he killed she killed it killed and so on and the he is dead he's being dead she is dead her being dead it's dead and so on and he which means arriving he's arriving her arriving it's arriving or he arrived he is arriving he arrives she arrives she arrived uh, her arriving and so on or the passive one washte which means good or nice and means his goodness he is good her goodness she is good it is good and so on and uh, if in Lakota Hokshila means boy we can have this sentence Hokshila king he the boy came or the boy is coming where Hokshila is a boy kin is the definite article and he means the boy's arrival the boy's arriving or just arrival if we put Hokshila in front it becomes the boy's arrival the boy's arriving and in this way which Hasha means he is a man his being man his uh, state of being a man and so on and which Hasha one he means a man came or a man is coming where which Hasha is man one is an indefinite article and he means arrival the man's arrival a man's arrival a man arrived literally a man's arrival again for the third person singular we have a zero prefix kte it naturally is understood as his killing he kills he killed or her killing she kills she killed and for the passive is the same the 
he is dead, she is dead, it is dead, and so on. For the first person singular with active roots, we have a personal pronoun or just a prefix wa, which means I, my. In this way, wakte means my killing of someone, my killing as an actor. I am killing someone, I am killing his, him, I am killing her, I am killing it, or I killed someone, I killed him, her, and so on. And pay attention that with passive roots we add not the prefix or the pronoun wa, but another one, ma. In this way, <coughs> Mace means I am dead, my being dead, and with arrive, if we would add the uh, wa, we have wa hi, I arrive, I arrived, and so on, and with wa te, to be good, to be nice. We again add the uh, ma and the result is ma washte. I am good, I am nice. Don't forget, at the moment I am talking about preposed sentences. Preposed, non topicalized, active and passive sentences. So we have kte. He kills, he killed. Wakte, I am killing, I kill, I killed. Te, I am dead, uh, he is dead, she is dead. Mate, I am dead. And for the second person singular, we add the prefix or the pronominal form, ya. In this way, we have yakte. You killed, you are killing, you killed her, you are killing her, you killed someone, you are killing someone, and Yahi will mean you arrive, you are arriving, you arrived, and so on. And uh, for the passive roots, here we will uh, add again another form, not ya, but ni. And in this way we have te, he is dead, he died, ma te, I am dead, I died, ni te, you are dead, you died, and ni wash te, you are good, you are nice. You were nice, you were good. As a kind of a fourth person, we can regard the reflexive forms with the prefix ich he. Ich hikte, he killed himself, she killed herself, and so on. And in order to form the plural, we add the suffix p. So, if kte means he killed someone, he killed her, she killed him, she killed someone, kte pi means they killed someone, they are killing of someone, they killed him, they killed her, and so on. In the same way, if te means he is dead, she is dead, he died, she died. Tepi means they are dead, they died. And which hasha pi means they are good, they were good. Uh, in fact, they are men, they were men. And wash the pi means they were good, they are good.
Accordingly, if we say he p, this will mean it is they coming, they are coming, they come, they came. And Hokshila kin he p will mean this is the boys coming, the boys are coming, the boys come, the boys came. So we have Ktepi, they are killing, they killed someone, they killed him, they kill her and so on. Tepi, they are dead, they died. And for the second person plural, the sentences will look like this. Yak tepi. You all are killing someone, you all killed someone or killed him. Yahipi, you all arrive, you all arrived. And for the passive ones, Tepi, which means they are dead, they died. For the second person, plural, ni tepi, you all are dead or you all died. And ni wash tepi, you all are good, you all are nice. For the first person, plural, the form is ung tepi. However, it has an ambiguous uh, meaning. More precisely to say, it has two meanings. The first one, we killed someone, we killed someone, we killed him, we killed her, or we killed it. And the second one, they killed us, or literally, we are killed by them. We were killed by them. This is their killing of us. In the first case, uh, this is our killing as actors. And in the second case, this is our killing as victims. victims. On hippie will mean we arrived, we arrived. And I'm not sure that's why I've put an asterisk here, but logically it must be on tepi. We are dead, we died. And for the fourth person or the reflexive one, the sentence will look like this. Each hik te pi. They killed themselves. Now I will repeat what I have said so far using other verbs. The verb u, which means again to come. And the verb kuje, kuje which means I am ill. This is my illness. So, wow, I come, I'm coming, I came. Yao, you come, you are coming, you came. And just u, he came, she came, he is coming, she is coming. For the passive uh, variant, makuje, makuje. I am ill, or literally, my illness is this. Ni huje, you are ill, or this is your illness. And only huje, which means he is ill, she is ill, this is his illness, her illness. Accordingly, hokshila kin huje means the boy 
is ill, the boy was ill. So far, I talked about preposed sentences and now I will talk about incorporated sentences. For example, for the active roots, we'll have Ole, he seeks, he is seeking, he sought someone uh, here for the third person singular. It is the same as before, but uh, for the first person singular, we have not wawole, but o wale. The pronominal morpheme is now inserted into in the middle of the root, as happens in Arabic, for example. O wale, I am uh, seeking, I sought, and so on. And for the second person singular, we have O yale, you are seeking, you seek, you sought. For the passive forms, which hasha, which means he is a man. For the first person singular, it will become not ma we chasa, but we ma chasa. I am a man, and you are a man, will be we ni chasa instead of ni we chasa. For the plural, we observe the following. Which hasha p? We are men. If we say win, which hasha without p, this means I and you are men. But if we add p, <coughs> un, which hasha p, this now means we all are men. And you all are men will be we need hasha p. In fact, here we have a mixed conjugation because the first forms, uh, I mean this form and this one, are preposed, and this one is formed by incorporation. Um which hasha is an exclusive form and un which hasha p is an inclusive form. A passive active mixed phrase atei he is someone's father, he is her father, he is his father. Ate waye already means uh, he is my father here we have an active pronominal morpheme and niate with a passive pronominal morpheme means just your father more examples come to be old he is old, she is old, someone is old. Ma kan, I am old. Ni kan, this, uh, you are old. Un kan, I and you are old. An exclusive form. Un kan pi, we all are old. An inclusive form ni can pi you all are old can pi they are old and which are kang means 
they are collectively old. This is a collective form. Respectively, he puse, he is thirsty, she is thirsty, it's his thirst, it's her thirst, he ma puse, incorporated a morphine. I am uh, thirsty, I ni puse, you are thirsty, I puse pi, they are thirsty, I un puse, I and you are thirsty, I un puse pi, we all are thirsty, I ni puse pi, you all are thirsty, I which hapuze, they are collectively thirsty. Lakota numerals also can act as verbs. For example, topa is four. When I was a child, one of my favorite books about Indians was the novel uh, the Sons of the Great Bear by the German author Liselotte Welpskopf Henrik and there was a hero called Mato Topa, the Four Bears. It was uh, his name because he killed four bears and uh, Topa P becomes a plural verbal form which means therefore un topa pi already means we are for ni topa pi is you all you are for in fact you are for wanieto means winter here from here Wanietu ma topa means winters mine are fall. I have seen four winters. My winters are fall. I am four years old. Now I am explaining how one can form negative and interrogative sentences. He his arrival, her arrival, he arrived, her arrived, wahi, my arrival, I arrived, I am arriving, yahi, you arrived, you arrived, from here, adding shni to the end of the sentence, we can say wahi shni. I don't arrive, I'm not arriving, I didn't arrive. Uh, this is not my arrival, literally. And to form a question, he had the particle who, huo, uh, in men's speech, and the particle he, in women's, spe in women's speech. So, Yahi, you arrive, you arrived. Yahi huo, did you arrive? Can ask a man. Yahi he, did you arrive? Can ask a woman. Kte, he kills, he killed, she kills, she killed. It's his killing, it's her killing. Wakte, I kill, my killing. Wakteshni, it's not my killing. I am not killing, I don't kill, I didn't kill. Yakte, you kill, you killed. Yakte huo, did you kill, can ask a man. Yakte he, did you kill, are, are you killing, can ask a woman. That's how the future tense is formed in Lakota. Which hasha? He is a man. 
we much hush up. I am a man. We much hush up te becomes I will be a man. Te is the future tense particle. And I'm not sure, but uh, maybe I will not be a man, will become we much hashak te shni. Oh, he comes, he came. Wow, I came. Yao, you came. Ukte, he will come. And a woman can ask. Uktahe, will he come? Let's see how necessity can be expressed in Lakota. If U means he comes or he's coming, Ukte, he will come. He has to come, he must come, will be. Ukta hecha. Where there is a little phonetic change here, and hecha means necessary. He must not come. Ukte shni hecha. That's how we make exclamations in Lakota. For example, Washte, he is good, she is good. Ma washte, I'm good. Ni washte, you are good. And a man can say, Ni washte ye lo, or Ni washte lo, or how good are you? Oh, you are so good. Mostly women use the particle kshto. And uh, then one, a woman can say, Ni washte kshto. You are so good. And as in many other languages, in Lakota too are some irregular verb forms. Another uh, verb for come, besides he and u, is ye. He came, she came, he is coming, she is coming. A future form is ying te. In the first person singular, instead of wa ye, we have the sub the suppletive form ble. I come, I came. For the future tense, we have ning te, another suppletive irregular form. For the second person, instead of ya ye, we have just le. You come, you came. For the future, nin te, you will come. And in the plural, ung ye, we, I and you come, I and you came. For the future, ung ying te, I and you will come. Ung yang pi, we all come, we all came. For the future, ung yang pi te, we all will come. Lapi, you all will come again. Lapi, you all will come. Lapi, we all come, we all came. Lapi, we all will, you all will come. Yapi, they come, they came. Yapikte, they will come. More irregular verbs. The verb yuha, he has it, she has it, and the verb wangke, he saw it, she saw it, or he sees it, she sees it. 
For the first person singular, blue heart. I have it, you have it. For the second person, blue heart. You have it, you had it. You happy. They have it, they have him. Ung you ha, I and you have it. Ung you ha pi. We all have it. Lu ha pi. You all have it. Kwan blake. I saw it. I saw him. Kwan blake. You saw it, you saw him. One young happy, they saw it, and so on. Before I continue further, I would like to pay, to pay attention to the fact that this element BL here is the same as this one here, and this L here is the same as this one here. In fact, this BL replaces the first singular personal pronoun WA or MA and this one replaces the second person singular pronoun YA or NI. Now, Let's see what happens if we replace the active personal pronoun or pronominal prefix before an active root with a passive one. So, wakte means I killed him, I killed her, I killed it, I killed someone. Literally, my killing of him, of her, of it, of someone. Yakte, accordingly, means you killed him, her, it, someone. This is an active personal pronoun. And this is an active root. So, if instead of wakte we say makte with an active root but uh, with a passive personal pronoun, the result is makte. He killed me, she killed me someone killed me. If the phrase is makte pi, then the meaning is they killed me. In the same way, yakte, you killed me, but nikte, he killed you, she killed you, someone killed you. Nikte pi, they killed you. Unkte means he killed us. And a little bit ambiguous is the form or the phrase Unkte pi, which can be interpreted in two ways. The first one, he killed us. This is his killing as an actor of us, or we killed him. If we say wakte, this means this is my killing as an actor, and uh, if we say makte, then the meaning is, this is my killing as a victim. 
the examples I've just showed contained a preposed direct object ma, mi, o ni, you. It's the same here. If wakte means I kill him or I killed him, I killed her, I killed someone. And if ka means a strike or a hit, the phrase ka wakte will mean I kill I killed him or her or someone with a strike, with a hit. An incorporated object we have in these examples here. So the verb or the verbal noun slowly means he knows it accordingly slow why I know it slow ya ye you singular know it slow ung ye I and you know it slow ung ya young p means we all know it slow ya ya p means you all know it and if we say slow my ye already we have the meaning he knows me so only slow ye means he knows something he knows it slow my ye he knows me and slow ni ye means he knows you now i will show you that in lakota there are ergative structures too as in many other languages wakte i killed him i killed her i killed someone yakte you killed him you singular killed him killed her killed someone if we replace wa uh, with ma we have makte he killed me this is his killing of me or she killed me and uh, if we say ma yakte then this means you singular killed me literally I by you were killed this is uh, the killing of me by you and if we say ma yakte pi this already means you plural killed me here ma in fact is a personal pronoun in the absolutive case and ya is a personal pronoun in the ergative case I have uh, many other lectures on ergativity and ergative languages you can <coughs> see them to find out what I mean. In Lakota, there is a special reciprocal pronoun, she, which means from me to you. So, if he means killing, his killing of someone, her killing of someone, someone's killing of someone, and if Abhe means waiting, he's waiting for someone, her waiting for someone, and so on. Here, preposing she before Kte, we receive 
the meaning I killed you concerning one person I killed you singular if we say Chiktepi this means I killed you all plural and here already not preposing but inserting or incorporating Chi into Abhe we receive Achipe I am waiting for you singular and I am not sure but logically it must be like this I am waiting for you all must maybe is Achipe P at the beginning of this lecture I said that Lakota is regarded to be a topic prominent, topic oriented language and now I will explain <coughs> what this means the word kte which means he killed someone, he killed her she killed someone, she killed him, she killed it, and so on is not topic oriented uh, but if we want to use a topic uh, oriented uh, sentence it will look like this he te he means uh, he, she exactly as to him, as to her because this is a topical personal pronoun so he te as to him he killed someone as to her she killed someone and so on the form Wakte, which means I killed someone, I killed him, is not topic oriented, not topicalized, but if we say he, Wakte, this already means as to him or as to her, I killed him, I killed her. In the same way, here we have Ktepi, they killed someone, Hena Ktepi, as to them, they killed someone. Hippi, they arrived, Hena Hippi, as to them, they arrived. Washtepi, they are good, Hena Washtepi, as to them, they are good. Hokshilapi, they are boys, Hena Hokshilapi, as to them, they are boys. And uh, if which hasha means he is a man, we match hasha, I am a man. And if one blake means I saw, we can form a topic oriented uh, sentence which hasha one, one blake. I saw a man. As to a man, I saw him. More examples for topicalization of nouns. As we know, good in Lakota is washte. Ma washte means I am good. Ni washte, you are good. Red is sha. Olowang means song and Haspang means apple. In this way, the song is good, will be all one king he washte. As to the song, it is good. Song the it good. As to the song, it is good. Literally, the song, it's good. 
The apple is red, the husband king, Le Sha. In fact, this apple, this apple is red, the husband king, Le Sha. Shunka means dog. So, Shunka King he sape. As to the dog, it's black. Dog, article, it, black. The dog is black and big, will be Shunka King he sapin na tanka. And if I saw a man in Lakota East which has a one, one blake. Logically, I saw a dog should be Shunka one, one blake. And maybe I saw a black dog Shunka Sapa one, one blake. In the plural, there is a difference between sentences containing an animate noun like Hokshila, boy, boys, and an inanimate noun like Chang, tree, trees. In the first case, the boys are tall. The sentence normally will be Hokshila King Hangs Ka Pi. This is the morpheme designating the plural. But since Chang tree is an inanimate noun, uh, the tree Sa Tol will be Chang King Hangs Ka Ska. Here, P is missing, but we have a reduplication of the word or only of part of it. The three are tall, Chang King, Hans Kaska. And the sentence, the apples are red, or these apples are red. Uh, we will look in the same way. Thus, Punk King Lena Sha Sha. Here, red Sha is reduplicated again. The apples are good. Thus, Punk King Lena Wash Te Te. Here, again. There is a reduplication of the second part of the word good. Now I will talk about topicalization and articles. As I said before, a noun or an object can be topicalized by using reduplication. For example, washte, he is good, he washte, as to him, he is good. He washte shni, as to him, he is not good. Or, a new example, abhe, which means to hit someone, he hits someone, he hits someone, and so on. A map he is he hit me. A non topicalized word, but uh, in the sentence a te tohan he. Amap Heshni, my father never hits me.
we have the same as here uh, as to my father he never hits me the father is designated once by the word Ate which means exactly my father and once uh, by the form of the verb Abhe which is in the third person and designates him or her however in Lakota there are many words or suffixes uh, which can be regarded as articles or topic markers or even uh, fulfilling both functions some authors call them articles others call them topic markers a row of uh, such uh, articles or topic mark markers is one which uh, could be could become one G if we add G to it and uh, if we add Ni it will become one G Ni it usually designates uh, non-definite objects and subjects King designates definite subjects and objects and Takuni, Etang, Etangni or Tueni are used to designate subjects and objects in some other cases I will talk about this in detail in a while let us see these examples Hokshila King Kuje which means the boy is sick Hokshila boy King corresponds to the English the and Hoje means sick which Hasha Wang Solwaye I know a man or I knew a man where which Hasha is a man Wang corresponds to the English indefinite article and Solwaye means I know where wa designates I which Hasha Wang he a man came again an indefinite uh, article which however expresses uh, typicality to as to a man he came which Hasha Wang Matho King Wan Yanke a man saw the bear if we replace the articles then we'll have which Hasha King Matho Wang Wan Yanke a man uh, the man saw a bear as to the man he saw a bear now I will give you more examples Yuha is he has she has Luha I have Luha you have Shunkan Wakhan means a horse Mila a knife I have a horse I have one horse is Shunka Wakhan one Luha he will give me a knife Mila Wang Maku Kte. We see that the markers are the same in these two sentences. 
for non-real topic, for example, in uh, in questions, this article changes to one G, and uh, the sentence "Do you have a horse?" will be "Shukan wakan one G luha he." means you have, not you give. In a similar way, he will give you any knife, will be Mila Wanji Makuk Te. And if we have a negative sentence, thing, things change again. And <clears throat> For this case, especially, we have an article uh, which is one genie. I have not a horse, I have no horse. Shunka Wakhan one genie, Bluka Shni. The form of the, article, of the article depends on many factors. If the sentence is uh, negative or not, if uh, the object is in the plural or not, if uh, it designates an inanimate plural topic or animate human topic or animate non-human topic and so on, I will just give you more examples without discussing this in detail. The sentence I didn't see any man will be which hasha to any one which have where we have this uh, to any article or topic marker. I didn't see any dogs, however, will be Shunka Takuni, one which have blackish ni, where the article already will be Takuni. The same will be for I didn't see any knives, Mila Takuni, one which have blackish ni. And uh, I don't have any meat, can be expressed in two ways. Thalo takuni bluha shni, or Thalo etanni bluha shni. Otherwise, takuni can act simply as a pronoun indefinite or negative pronoun. Uh, he didn't drink anything. Takuni yatke shni. In these sentences, one of them expressing question and the other one negative, again we have different articles. Do you have any knives? Mila etang luha he. The articles is etang. Uh, in fact, this is a, a question and this is a positive sentence. I have some knives. Mila eya luha here. The article is eya. 